gamers we got week two of egc tv the elite classic el clasico uh and i'm gonna be analyzing my games we got four different series some of them we're gonna do a little bit more in depth some of them we're gonna skip through spoilers i did win the group eight to one score 17 to four games plus 13 game difference and i will be moving into the playoffs and another spoiler alert watch out this is the bracket for the playoffs so i am going directly into the semi-final and i will be playing on march 23rd and marine lord is on the other side because he won his group and then we got poppy paul lucifer and vortex on my side of the bracket and the top side is louis b and wham on marine lord side of the bracket so should be exciting, should be good stuff. There's also tournament win rates that we can go over. Maybe I'll make another video for it, we'll see. But let's get into it. So this was uh, my first match of this weekend, this past weekend that just happened, and it was Cutie Patootie versus Baltoon. Now I do want to say that every player in the top 20, I feel like I could have beaten anyone at any point. Players are really good, the competition is just heating up. And what better way to start off the weekend uh, than me spawning with the double forward gold. So, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's go. And the RNG gods also gave me the boar next to the second gold to make it even harder to make a pit there. But, we use the boar to our advantage. So... Uh, I haven't had as much experience in this matchup actually, so I wasn't sure what Baltin's gonna do. I thought he's gonna castle rush, but then I saw the stone. And I was like, wait, is this second town center? Is this for the Daimyo Manor? Is he cooking something? What's happening here? So I wasn't kind of sure. And here, obviously, I knew he's gonna pull the boar. So I waited for him to pull the boar, and then I came with my scout to pick up the boar and carry it away so that I can actually do my... Uh, pit so I just ran around with the boar a little bit while I did some walling And I still wasn't sure what he's gonna do. There's the boar again I'm trying to make stuff I scout and I see barracks So I was like, okay, so he's making units doesn't seem like he's castle rushing only three on gold And I see that the stone was mine just enough for daimyo. So I was like, okay, he's He's gonna, I'm assuming, be aggressive. So I'm rushing archer range, I'm rushing barracks, I don't want to lose this. And then I was like, well, this boar... I can use against him. You know, so I used boar to defend my gold. And, uh... That kind of worked, you know, denying him from attacking. It was pretty nice. My unit started popping out, and then he added a horseman um, as well. So, like I said, I haven't played against this too much. And I was like, I don't know if he's going to rush castle from here and out. Like, I don't know what his plan is. So, I just committed to making units. And uh, I should speed this up. We got a lot of series to cover. So, I, I lose some of the houses. But then the archers start showing up. Plus one is coming up as well. I'm doing the uh, rehousing over here. I kill off a unit and then I, I, I already saw the horseman ride so I'm like okay I need to make spear uh, donzos as well together with archers and I wasn't really sure I lose a scout here I wasn't really sure what army comp to go for because like I said I have never played against this as Malian I played this again you know with other sips so I think I should have made sofas immediately I should have just gone sofa archer but you know I didn't it is what it is so here he's pushing in um, and obviously Onas do a shit ton of damage, but Donzos are good, doing a pretty good job tanking. I'm getting plus one melee armor. I snipe the, uh, the Bannerman, he pulls back, and this game kind of revolves around just me cow booming slowly behind it. He is giga massing units, he is just uh, on the external food sources, and he's just trying to get my gold mines. Here I get caught pretty badly and I lose nine workers. Or maybe I lost like seven or eight, because uh, I think I lost a worker earlier here. So at this point I was like, uh-oh. But I did have my cow boom pretty much completed. 
So I didn't feel like, oh, this is game ending, right? If I had no cows, this is game ending, but it was still fine. I pulled the boar here on him again. And obviously the weakness of mass melee units is buildings. Or I guess one of the weaknesses. So I just kite these Onas into the town center. The town centers have 15 villagers as well. And at this point, I knew that I'm trading better, but I'm like, I might be having too much idle on my economy, you know, and I might have lost too many workers as well. So I defend that again, but I feel like I had a big army left over. 24 archers is quite a lot. So the cow boom is now completed. I do a little wall here. And he keeps trying to push through here, try to destroy this. And here I use the, the opportunity that I had so many units left over to switch to sofas. Um, getting more and more stables up. And the game kind of looks pretty close, to be honest. I mean, I'm not going to lie. The bannerman is going to go down here again. Like, I was kind of steering. I was like, uh-oh. Like, I don't really know if he's going to age up. I don't, I don't know what his economy is looking like right now. So I was a bit worried. I do transition to Sofa and I immediately raid. Because the best thing you can do while you're getting attacked sometimes is to do a little raid. So I go in here, deny some food, start killing some villagers. And at this point, um, you know, starting to raid your opponent and do some damage. I was like, okay, we're slowly coming back into this. Especially because I felt my army was pretty strong here. And the next fight, I think, goes just way, way better for me. Yeah, here we fight in a choke, which uh, is actually okay for him. Because Onas are hitting over each other. So I kind of move back a little bit so I can have more surface area on my sofas to attack. But um, obviously with this many ranged units, you know, he's taking a pretty, pretty bad fight. And sofas are doing their tanking. Meanwhile, I'm harassing behind it. And I knew that he is slowly running out of food. I go for the Grand Fulani Age Up. And I immediately get upgrades, but he taps out. That was game number two, actually. Now, game number one, I will show you as well. So this was actually game number one. The one we just watched was game number two. And game number one, let me tell you, if you thought that game was kind of, you know, worrisome and close, game number one was even worse for me. I almost lost this one. Like, actually almost lost. So, it was HRE versus English. So, we're gonna speed up through this part, because not much uh, obviously happens. I'm gonna end up doing some longbows, some harassment, and all the good stuff. And, um... This game goes from like, oh, I'm fine to like, what the, am I losing this? And then I'm like, I'm dead. And then the moment I said, you know, sitting alone in my room, I'm dead. Obviously the winning started happening. Because I activated the, you know, the super dent power. Of saying I'm losing and then I win. So, he's going spearmen, he's going archers. I'm defending here, I'm getting my eco upgrades and uh, getting some farms and I'm gonna start pushing in, in, in a second. And here we go. So I start pushing out, but the problem is he has already aged up and he has double tower as well. So I'm coming here and he is burgering my ass too. So I was like, okay, I gotta deny the gold. So I go in with the ram, gold gets denied, but he immediately was already on the other gold. And I wasn't sure how many units he has. Like, I wasn't sure if he has a lot of archers, so I didn't know if I should split units to the bottom. I'm tr I kill the towers. I'm getting the blacksmith on this side. I deny the upgrade, which was pretty nice. And, uh... I'm trying to actually send some units on this side, but I get intercepted. And here, I'm just kind of denying the gold and trying to go for the chapel. Some units eventually arrive here. And then slowly, I'm like, wait, this is not good. So I didn't know that he had... Or did I know, actually? I'm not sure. Did I see this? 
No, so I did not see the, the villagers were on berries. Obviously, if I knew, I would have sent this army immediately to kill these guys. But I did not see them. And he also sent the villagers across the map. All the way here. To get on my deer. So he was a bit wild with, with his uh, villagers moving around. But the men-at-arms are coming. And uh, I was almost into castle. But... Initially, I wanted to go to castle, but the amount of men-at-arms that were coming, I was like, oh shit, I have to make units. So I was like, uh, do I greet it out? Do I try to get to castle? Do I not? I didn't know what to do. Here I managed to snipe a worker or two with my villagers. Oh, one worker. And you can see, like, the men-at-arms are streaming into my base. Now, I still have this army, and I am idling his eco. I killed a chapel, which was nice. Uh, I'm idling his eco, but back in my base, my eco is also completely idle. And these men at arms are like not dying at all. So I kind of defend. And the problem is, as you can see on my resources, because my villagers were idle for so long, I actually spent all my food in trying to. or just producing food, just producing um, villagers and producing units. I even had idle time there because I was in zero food. And now I'm like, okay, I need to make more archer ranges and I just need to make like longbows. I find his workers here, which was pretty nice. And at this point, I was like, I have no idea if I'm ahead or behind. More men at arms arrive. I am micring here and here. So I end up losing a few workers. Uh, and again, the men at arms are not really taking too much damage. With these guys, I was just running around and picking off workers wherever I could. Um, while men at arms were hitting me. He's back on the gold. And I am steering. I am fully on steer. Looking at this right now, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought I was in a way, way worse position. So... I went on deer on top, he finds me there, I lose another villager. Add some units here, apparently attacking the mining camp, kick W. More units are coming. And every time I try to recover a little bit, he just sends like five more men at arms that I spend like two minutes killing. I decide to wall off here so I can get some berries and the game just really turned just weird, you know? His longbows were here, placed to deny the farms, which worked out pretty, pretty well. But you can see on both sides we took a lot of villager losses. Now he's coming in again. This time I got 16 longbows, so I'm kind of doing some damage, managing to deny. Now nine minute arms are coming. He goes straight for the villagers, and again my economy is completely idle. I make a little ram here to ram the tower and, and maybe kill some villagers in there. And this whole time I'm trying to kite. You know, trying to kill the units, you can see they're not really taking a lot of damage. But I don't really have another option, so... Like, I can't age up, there's no way. So I have to keep producing... Basically, I have to keep producing units... Uh, while trying to kill his workers, right? Because if I just stay in my base and produce units, I will lose eventually to men at arms. But I needed to put pressure on him so that I can potentially age up at some point. I arrive here with the spearmen, couple of villagers go down, the ram arrives. These longbows are still killing, you can see a worker here and there dying. I move out with nine longbows to try to harass, but again the med arms show up. And I just have more idle time, and more fucking men at arms keep showing up. And uh, the longbows do arrive. Deny the gold finally. I had a tower here, by the way, and a tower here. So I was denying this gold and stone and, and deer. The men at arms are still still ongoing. He's back on the deer. He's going to the top gold now. And uh yeah, this game was really all over the place. And I still got these three longbows just chilling here, trying to pick up. You can see his farms are mostly idle. He comes in again, but at this point I have 31 longbows, you know, so it's not looking bad at all. I managed to find these workers, kill a couple, 
he goes for a push, but like I said, look at that. 48 longbows, and they're doing one damage per hit because he has six armor, but in the end, it is enough to get the W. So that was a really close one. It was a really close one. I do end up winning that, and that was a 2 0 against Baltoon. My next match on Saturday was against Anna Chad. Now, Anatan played this one pretty weird, and I think he wanted to snipe my deli with his Chinese, which he did get. Uh, did not He did not end up winning, but he got the matchup he wanted, and it was kind of a weird game. And the reason why it was weird, because um, I expected he's going to be more aggressive with his army, but he was just kind of standing here the whole time. And the reason why he was standing, I guess, is because I had two sacred sites, but not three. So he didn't need to push out, and he went really early farms. Like he didn't really bother getting food on the, you know, on the map. He just kind of went super, super early farms with uh, with China. So he went for a barbecue right here, and I just went, you know, the normal Delhi stuff. I went Gazi Raiders. I was trying to see if he gets a second TC. I went to spread his deer. So that if he does go to collect them, this is going to be terrible. It's basically almost unusable, right? Because the uh, distance for them is so long. You can see I'm pushing all the deer here at the same time. And now that deer pack is completely screwed too. So that was pretty good start. You know, not much happening, but pretty good start. He made some horsemen to go around and harass. And I actually lost the first scholar because I did not see the stables at all. So I lost the first scholar, so now I have to kind of escort this scholar to make sure I don't uh, lose this one too, because that would be really, really bad. And now I'm just capturing sacred sites, and I'm just massing units, right? So I'm I'm thinking like he's gonna want to fight me soon, so I'm just massing units. But he ended up, like I said, just kind of AFKing and not really engaging with me. Is Delhi score bugged? Uh, yeah, Delhi upgrades don't count into score because they're free. So they just don't count. I'm checking here if he has stone. And I see no stone. So I'm like, okay, is he making units? Is he trying to castle rush? Look at this. He made mill. And there's only two deer here. There's another deer there. Another deer there. Another deer deer. So very, very spread out. He goes for the boar. And, you know, looking back at his game, I should have been more aggressive, I guess. But I also thought he would be the one to come out, you know. So, you know, didn't play this game perfectly. Obviously, it could be better, but I think any game you play could be better, right? I have a guys do that patrolling here. For some reason, I didn't even... This was the first engage we had. For some reason, I didn't even think of him going on boar. I don't know why and at this point I was very confused how is he affording units if he has no food like if he's not getting food anywhere so I was very very confused there now this was a really really good fight and uh, yeah watching this replay now I should have probably pushed hard here but again I was a bit confused with what he was doing and with what was happening in the game so I think at this point I decide to age up just play it like push here but also age up which i don't know i made a wall here so you can't re-wall now maybe i should have just fully committed maybe i should have just aged up and gotten the relics and the upgrades but instead i go for like in between where i do push because i didn't expect he's gonna have this many units because of lack of food so i deny the boar maybe i should have just gone for um like I said, age up and then upgrade stuff. But when I saw this army, I was like, what the fuck? And it was kind of too late to run away because I would have had a really bad engage. So I kind of commit, but obviously it does not go too, too well. And I lose lose all my calories. And now he's on 70 Zuginu and I'm like, uh oh. So I decided to go for a quick mango so I can deny this and not die. I end up defending. He goes back, I think in a second he ages up. And the problem is, the fact that he went for early farms means that his transition to like, just massing units is gonna be faster than mine will. 
So he ages up. He went on this food over here. Not much happens at this point. We're just kind of poking. I'm harassing here and there. I decided to do a push, but he already had a Springle uh, in Q. So I don't end up doing a lot of damage here. I forced some fights and some trades, but nothing too crazy. He actually killed more workers of mine than I did of his. And I think I get four relics total, if I'm not mistaken. I think I get this relic as well eventually. Yeah, I, I get that relic too. So I got four relics, which wasn't bad. You know, there was some micring happening here. Like he splits his units to catch my archers. But I end up trading better. Uh, but overall, I was like, eh, that did not go as well as I wanted it to. So I kept trying to scout if he had second town center. And I saw that he did not. So I felt in a not not good but i felt comfortable because i was like if we go to imperial like even though it's china versus delhi you know i'll be more comfortable than if i lost you know right now right or or if i get pushed right now since i'm pretty comfortable in imperial i did a little wall here and uh so the palace guards can go in and basically he just killed my stuff with zuginu but i target fire like six or seven villagers while I was walled in. So I think I killed one here and another worker here. Maybe it was here. But yeah, I killed like, you can see the workers are planking there. So I killed some workers, so I was like, all right, we're chilling. Then I wanted to put a little bit of pressure on the sacred side, so I went for this keep. And my plan was to just mine out this gold, even though I don't need gold. I just went for it so I can mine it out so he doesn't get it. So I just went kind of all out in the gold. Now the funny thing is, one thing I did not see actually during this game. So there's a lot of raiding happening, by the way. I've been sending gas raiders here and there. And now I need to transition to farms because I'm going to be out of food very, very quickly. Um, so in a little bit, I'm going to start transitioning to farms. There it is. And um, I also have to stop, you know, spamming gas raiders and I have to just focus on getting the farms up. You can see my food income is pretty bad, but I'm chopping his gold, so that's pretty good. So what I did not realize is how close I was to Sacred Side win because I kind of just give it up. And the reason I gave it up is I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even realize that Sacred Side was close-ish. Uh, so I could have maybe gone for that. Here he tries to get the keep. I kill an S to B. He comes with his Springles. Now this is where I could have maybe tried to hold on. When I say close, it's like it's five minutes, right? But maybe I could have tried holding that. I have six Springles. He has three. And most of his army is crossbows and uh, Zuginu, or actually just Zuginu. But, you know, it's it's a lot easier when you watch the game than when you play the game. Because I was like, I didn't know if he has like 30 palace guards. Because if I go there with this siege with almost no protection, I'm going to lose everything, right? So, I was like, ah, do I go for it? Do I try to save the second side? I was like, nah. But I didn't realize that maybe I could have. It's hard to say. So he ends up decapping this. He has a lot of spearmen as well. And I'm just trying to mine all the resources on his side of the map. Basically. I mined like three and a half thousand gold here. And we are going into late imp now. I'm getting all my upgrades. I aged up uh, before him, which was pretty nice. 36 villagers killed so far. I'm getting madrasas to get my upgrades, getting another keep. I gotta keep on this side to get this wood line, which is his wood line. Um, gotta keep on the middle. Doing a little stone wall. You know, I'm just setting myself up for late, late imp, like I said, which I felt pretty comfortable in. So, and I'm also sending a lot of villagers to chop this wood line specifically, which was his wood line. Big stone wall. Again, we're gonna speed this up. He aged up with Great Wall Gatehouse here, which I found pretty interesting. But then if he didn't, I could have probably taken it down. Oh, yeah. So here, my idea was, I'm just gonna wait for all my upgrades. You can see I have a shit ton of food. 
and I can't really fully commit to fighting until I research all my upgrades because once I research all my upgrades then I can get the scholars up because I have like 20 something supply and scholars and then I can um, you know make a full army and try to go for it so I'm getting literally every single upgrade in the game and uh, my goal here because I had four relics I had two sacred sites uh, and I am building markets to trade is to just go mass elephant now, oh. Mass Elephant is actually really good. Like, obviously, if you're playing against, like, crossbow, handkin, and your spearman, you don't want to make pure elephant. But in general, elephants are pretty good for uh, their supply. They're very expensive. But if you have infinite resources, they're very good. So right now, I have 67 workers killed. And from this point on, I just spam Gazi Raiders and harass the whole time while massing the elephants behind and i started making uh rams as well in order to start breaking down the walls everywhere and just kind of play this multitasking game so basically his units are stronger but i'm gonna just out multitask him so i did a little elephant run by here tower elephant run by and you can see look at them look at them farming the villagers right now Villagers are farming the farms, but I'm farming the villagers. So, I'm just doing a little run by. 9,900 workers killed. His work account is pretty in a, in a pretty bad spot. He does a little run by here. My scholars are out because I have uh, I'm finished researching everything. Attacks are pinging everywhere. Action everywhere. Melee elephants. Melephants are coming out now. And uh, I'm just sending them over here. Now we're fighting Mass Spear with Melifans. I don't know why this elephant is just AFK, but you know, it is what it is. I sent two to kill Nest of Bees. It goes down. And again, as I'm doing that, he has to send like so much of his units to defend. And I'm just pushing the other side with more, um, with more elephants. Just breaking everything, killing his production here. I denied him of this wood line. So it's, it's basically like a bunch of small victories, even though I am trading inefficiently, I, I knew I had better income, right? So I knew that this was his uh, last gold over here, so I just sent some Gazi Raiders again to mow that down. On the bottom, the Melephants and the Elephants, that's Tower Elephants, are just destroying everything. I'm going for the second town center, getting all these things down getting the monastery down so again you know a building here a wall there a villager there and it's slowly slowly adding up behind that i had 19 traders because i i still had my goal a little bit here and here i don't think i ever mined out this goal i think i didn't even see it um but yeah i'm putting some walls here so that he cannot stonewall immediately to keep that open breaking this gate broke that gate broke that gate so you know i'm just trying to be as annoying as possible and just harassing him everywhere and i thought it'd be funny to just go mass elephants right because when do you get to see mass elephants so this is where i said no more gazi raiders just elephants i want pure elephant army don't at me and that's what i did brother so here his army is 74 spearmen 27 hand cannoneers and i got 19 elephants they're coming out they're coming out hot who wins spearmen plus hand cannoneer or a lot of elephants and a little keep well elephants do win that and this is the point where I was like, okay, let's just make archers and Gazi Raiders. So I started making elite archers and Gazi Raiders to just push this back. But he decides to tap out because elephants kind of did their own thing. So very nice. All right. So that was game number one against Anochad. Now we're going to go into the next game. And by the way, guys, the reason I'm kind of speed speed running these uh, games is because like i said i have four series to cover and i used to do like one video per like two series but 
I feel like that's too many, you know, analyzing videos on YouTube then. So I, I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit and we do an, an uh, analysis video of like hour, hour and a half and we're good to go. Is that your highest villager killing competitive setting? I have no idea. I don't keep track of that. So this was, uh, I picked to have a sit. <clears throat> so I can't remember what the uh, deal was, but I think he had Malian. And it was basically like, well, he could play Japanese or Malian here. And I was like, well, I'm leading 1-0. So do I just try to counter Malian with Abbasid? Or do I just play, I can't remember what other save I had. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just go for it. So I picked Abbasid and um, I actually got this matchup, which I did play recently against Kilardi On cliffside, on the ladder, or practice, I don't know what it was. And I was actually like, okay, well, I know what to do. Uh, he gets back a gold, as you do. Um, so I was like, okay, I played this recently, so I think I know what to do. Turns out I did not want, know what to do because I forgot one very important thing. So when I played that match against Kilardi, I opened up with Horseman plus Archer range. And then when I lost the game, I was like, why didn't that work? Because it worked last time. And I was like, oh yeah, I was supposed to make Archers too. So... Basically, I just made Horsemen, which didn't really do anything, and then uh, the whole game was just a fiesta. Which I'll show you guys in a second. So here, I end up pushing him off the, uh, the farms. I make a little ram, and slowly I'm transitioning to second town center. So this archer range should have been done way quicker and it should have been rallying archers already. But it is what it is. So I get a ram, but I didn't really have enough to push this tower. Also he's making onas. I do kill two farms, which I thought was pretty good damage actually. Maybe I should have gone for all farms. I'm not sure. Um, but tower is kind of in annoying position because I have to like run in, in here. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I should have pushed from above. I don't I don't really know. But this just goes horribly. Like, I don't do anything here. I end up getting a second town center. And now he just goes for a for an age up. He's also doing some harassment in the back. He just goes for an age up. And I am just so, so far behind. Like, I have some archers and some horsemen. I'm chasing down Onas. And he is basically... I'm about to start spamming Mounted Samurai, and I don't even have a barracks. So I'm like, I was thinking like, do I make a barracks, or do I just try to YOLO age up? Because the opposite age up also takes a while. So I was like, I mean, I'll try to age up, and you can see it's kind of going slow. Uh, I do end up killing the Shinto Priest immediately, which was pretty nice, you know, denying that fast, fast relic. I see Mounted Samurai, I add Barracks immediately. Um, he denies me of uh, the gold, but I am aging up. So now it's like, I gotta survive against Mounted Samurai with no walls around my base, right? My base is completely open, no access to gold, and I have... Uh, one spearman that is feudal spearman so and against eight mounted samurai so like, oh. the same good chief so he ends up diving here i kind of defend kind of you know he ends up running but his economy is now just booming while my um, eco is idling a lot due to these mounted samurais and just him attacking me everywhere uh, it ain't looking good. So even here, you know, it's more idle time. I'm trying to get more production, but I have no food now because of idle time. So, yeah. I'm trying to get to farms because I can't go on these barriers. I can barely defend my own base. I'm trying to do some walls to make it easier for myself. But before I know it, the Onabugacious are coming. And I have, I think I had no veteran upgrades. Archers are futile and they are hardened spearmen. So I had no upgrades. I just started producing crossbows and basically the owners would completely mow me down. So I just say, all right. And for that reason, I'm out. 
I was sending a knight in the top side, but I don't think it would have mattered. He's now like fully pumping out units and I am just not. So yeah, I tried something, didn't really work out. Uh, I tried countering Malian and then I kind of derped on the Abbasid versus um, Japanese game, but it is what it is. Then we had a game on Mongolian Heights, which I had Mongols or Mongolian Heights and he had Ayubid. And uh, well, the spawn this game was something. It wasn't the worst spawn, but it was pretty bad. My goals were extremely far away. Extremely, extremely far away. So I went for a TC in between the two wood lines. I could have gone TC here, but I didn't actually see this gold. Because this is my first gold. So I was like, oh god, like that is that is so far away. It's disgusting. So I was like, alright, it is what it is. Uh, I wasn't sure what he's gonna do. Because Ayubid can go like a uh, fast dock and then you go for fast age up and then try to defend it. So I was kind of suspecting he's going to go for that with the fast eco or um, culture wing. But I was like, maybe he's just going to skip the docks. I don't know. So I was trying to scout what he's doing. And then I saw, oh, he's chopping wood. I couldn't find his dock because it wasn't in the middle. So I went down and I saw the dock and I was like, okay, now I know what's up. So I just went for it. Hey, what's up? Um, I just went for a uh, spearman and started burning down the dock. I also sent one spearman to this side to patrol for him to building another dock, but he actually like, I don't know if it's a five head or a two head, but he made a dock right on the middle, which would be so easy to deny because I'm right there, but I didn't expect he's gonna build a dock in the middle of the map. So, yeah, I thought if he goes to build a dock and my Khan even went to scout it, I put patrol here, but he just built it in front of my base. So the dock did go up and that was pretty unfortunate because this dock was going down. So if he had only, you know, if he had no docks, then obviously that's a pretty good advantage for me. Anyway, eventually I do a job. I do a little power here and he is already in feudal age before I even started aging up. And that's because of the uh, culture wing advancement that that is cheaper and you age up quicker but i did get this dock to burn so i was like okay cool stuff now he only has two fishing ships so the you know the lead he has is not massive i deny his gold over here i get my own dock and i'm just kind of denying the gold a little bit which was pretty nice i think not letting him get the upgrades so i can age up and kind of catch up a little bit I try to make a dock here, and he denied it, like, look at that. Very close. If that dock went up, the game is probably over. But he manages to deny it, so now I'm a bit uncomfortable, you know? I'm behind on workers. I felt like the Spearman stuff didn't really do too great, because he still has two docks now. And he saved two of the three fishing ships he had. And this is something I did not expect at all. So I knew he's making archers. Now the reason, so th this looks a lot, of, or uh, this looks really bad. So what ended up happening is, I saw an archer range here, right? So I have spearman, he makes archers. Then I make horsemen. So what I did is I focused on getting the dock up first and then making a horseman and getting the trade up. So, cause I thought, He's not gonna push with just archers. Like, that's fucking suicide. If I make stables and he pushes, he's gonna basically kill himself, right? But because I delayed my stable, he attacks with three archers as I'm building a tower. It gets denied. And I think I also lose a worker. And this happens again later on, on this goal. So right now, I managed to set the camp burning. I get some resources there, but I have two villager losses right now. And uh, he's ahead six. Yeah. Which is pretty bad. So then the same fucking thing happens. Because I sent two horsemen across the map because I thought he's gonna run away, you know? He's gonna run away with the fucking three, four archers he had, but instead he just stays in. I sent my two horsemen across the map. And the archers come back again 
And look at this. And I'm just like, bruh. Bruh. But then, you know what I say? I say it's my turn to just mass one unit. So I end up massing shit on a horseman, actually. I will go double stable, and I'm just massing horsemen. And for some reason, now I think that he didn't, he thought that I'm not gonna keep massing horsemen, that I'm gonna transition. So he's just trying to defend with archers. And because I kept massing horsemen, that did not work out for him. So you can see he's trying to get, I think he's, yeah, he's trying to age up to castle. Look at this, look at this, look at this bait, look at this bait. Look at this bait. That's right. That was mean game. Punk. You know what I mean? So here, he overextends with archers and I start eating that booty. He loses a lot of archers. You can see he's trying to age up, but at the same time now he's like, oh shit, I gotta get, make desert raiders. I had a uh, plus one range armor coming. He's trying to snipe these guys down. There's a lot of action happening on the map. By the way, I'm getting a dock here. I got a dock here up, which was pretty good. My trade is seven traders, but it's slowly going up. And um, I got fishing here too, double dock. So I'm like, okay, let's break his water now. Let's break his water. So I go in here. I already have a dock on this side with um, arrow slits. Is that what it's called? I got naval arrow slits. And I'm making ships. I break the wall so my demos can go in. I start burning down docks. I'm making more horsemen. And, uh, you know, doing some harassment here and there. Trade is still going. You can see he's kind of stuck in this loop of like, he's he wants to age up, but then he's like, oh shit, I gotta make units. And in the end, his age up was a little bit too, too late. Now he is denying some trade with the camels. Um, but all in all, the water slowly starts going down and I take full control of the water as well. The trade is pumping. I'm going for the deer. I end up burning this too. And right now, I know that he is one town center, right? Um, and I have full water plus I have trade. So I know at this point the game is probably over. I just need to not throw the game and do some kind of dumb attack and I just lose everything. So I just went to um, extend my lead. He tries making a ram here. I killed that with the horsey boys. I got Hurul tie. And um, yeah, we're both H3. He's got a lot of archers. He's got a lot of horsemen. More raids. Holding the middle with the ships. More raids. More fishing. More trading. More fishing. More raids. And now I'm transitioning to Keshik plus Archer. He's trying to snipe my boats here, but I start repairing, brother. Hell yeah, dude. His archers go down. And now I kind of have, if you look at my vision, I kind of have full vision of the water, right? So if he's trying to raid or something, I can intercept it. And, um, yeah. The lead continues to grow. And eventually, after defending a couple of raids, I just decide to gather my army and just kind of go for it. You know what I mean? Just kind of go for it. Look at that. I was going to flank from three sides, but then he was like kind of following this army. I was going to crunch him from like this side, this side, and this side. But then he kind of moved his army here, so that didn't work out. But in the end, you can see the army difference is just way too big. So he ends up tapping out. All right. Um, now, 
The next series I had was versus Abley. Oh boy, was that a series, huh? Let me show you the shorter game first. The other game against Avely was very long, but the Lucifer series is very short, so make sure you don't blink or you're going to miss out. So I end up beating Balton 2-0, uh, Anotan 2-1, Avely I beat 2-0, and then Lucifron I beat 2-0. So this was second game against Avely, which I'm showing you guys first. And um, he just went to JD, second town center, and then we fought. Nothing really crazy happened this game, I would say. He put some good pressure on me, but nothing really happened that it's like, I gotta analyze necessarily. Um, so yeah, I just got my upgrades, you know, I just played standard Mali and nothing really, nothing really too wild. I tried to deny second TC with fast Donzos, but timing did not quite work out. So I just ended up uh, harassing the gold a little bit Causing some idle time and getting my second gold on the big one Which is pretty good income here. I'm already cow booming and here he fully commits to just unit production So we have a little bit of a back and forth here my unit production was a bit late Which is kind of why I ended up taking so much damage from this uh, you can see it's like 4 versus 15, like he's fully, fully producing, and I'm still making my production building, so that was a bit rough. Maybe I was too greedy there, I'm not sure. But, um... Yeah, I'm just playing, I, I'm just playing defensive, just trying to, trying to mass my units. I am cow booming, so it's like, I am ahead right now, because I have passive gold from pit mines from Manzifori and I have passive gold a passive income from cows so uh, it's going pretty pretty well for me overall even though it doesn't look good right it looks like I'm taking damage everywhere which I am but I lose both of my pit mines which is pretty unfortunate every once in a while I try to snipe something here snipe a little horseman a little archer or something <clears throat> I rebuild and I kind of feel finally I'm ready to fight, so now I am trying to fight as much as I can. Um, and here I managed to snap JD's neck right there because she is an archer JD and she obviously takes bonus damage against javelin throwers. So here you can see the army is equal, but again I am in a pretty good spot because of the cows. He's trying to fight here as well, trying to force the engage. I managed to snap JD again. He bought her back, but you know, she died again. So no more buying back and uh, no experience gain, which is nice. I try to wall at the bottom um, while pushing at the same time. So he kind of ends up doing damage here, but I end up pushing on this side and killing uh, some workers. He actually runs into my army with just archers and the javelin throwers just start mowing down. Look at that. Love that. We go in here. He ends up killing my worker that was walling. And now I'm pushing the top side and pushing the bottom side. So I knew this army is forfeit. As in like, I can't reinforce it. So I knew that he's eventually gonna surround it and kill it. So I was just trying to snipe as much stuff. And I'm running it away from the other army that I have going, which is the top side, while aging up at the same time. So here we have a fight, and I, I traded out decently, not amazing, but decent. I denied a gold, and I immediately target this stable because it has the consecrated building buff to reduce cost, so I just kill it. It's a little bit of an eco damage there. Do a little wall here. And now I'm in castle. So now the sofa transition is happening, as you usually do. And at this point, I feel like he just did not do enough damage to kind of go on from here his JD is level 3 but you know, a bit too late and I just go for a big push here veteran donzos, veteran javelin throwers plus the ranged armor and javelin throwers from the archers spearmen are going in to tank and just kill the cavalry, sofas are going in to tank I sent some sofas on this side to break into the food sources <clears throat> I think in a bit, I don't know if I even start going for relics in this game. 
but I'm just massing units, you know, doing the Ilalus thing, uh, and he simply is edging up, but he does not have enough units, so he ends up losing that one. Now, that was the second game. The first game, I'm telling you, Drongo should cast this game. I'm not saying that because I won it, but trust me, when I say this, you haven't seen a game like this. And another thing I want to say is uh, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch this game. Okay? If you don't want spoilers, get Drongo to cast this one. But if you don't want spoilers for the game, don't watch this right now. Just skip through 5 minutes, 10 minutes. So we're gonna times 8 this because it's a 56 minute game. And it was probably the wildest game that I had in the whole tournament so far. So he was playing China, I was playing English. It started off, uh, you know, pretty, pretty standard. I tried to do a push, he made some horsemen. You know, this, that, he aged up. I got the second TC with the King's Palace, the Relics, yada, yada. You know. Like I said, kind of standard-ish. And you know what's funny? This is Avely's map. So this map, Bridges, which I actually really like, and I think a lot of people actually like. Uh, this map is in the tournament, and this is his map. Like, he made this map. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, home turf advantage. Yeah, rigged. So... Again, we're times aiding this because the game is very long. It's 56 minutes. Uh, so he kind of does like a army, but then he sneakily ages up like a snake. Like a literal snake, this guy. I can't believe he's done this to me. And then he starts spamming palace guards, and I was like, oh shit. I was like, wait, hold up. I got a lot of units. Wait, this ain't good. So I try to go around here, I see it's walled, so I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just run through here. I run in, one worker kill. Oh yeah, and he had archers here, and he sniped a couple of my workers, which is pretty annoying. So I go in here, and I'm trying to do some damage, because you kind of have to do damage, because he's castle. So if I just wait, the palace guards are going to mow me down. Meanwhile, I'm slowly getting to uh, castle as well. I try to snipe nested bees here, I manage to do it. And, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, trying to pick off a worker here and there. Managed to get two more here, so... No. He's still ahead on workers because of Song Dynasty. And, um, the game goes on. So, Palace Girls are coming. I have crossbows. I have men at arms. And now this is where... <coughs> you know... We're having trades, he's getting the relics. I think I got one relic. I don't know, did I even get one relic? I don't think I did. I think he got all five. So again, yada yada, we're skipping through. Yeah, you know, harassment, yada yada. Units, yada yada, nest of bees, palace guards, man at arms, crossbows, I get a spring old. And um I'm trying to get to Imp eventually. More units coming in. I do a little stone wall here. And he also gets his villagers inside. So he starts like running everywhere. So I'm trying to hunt down his villagers. And I go for a little Berkshire right here. The reason for that is I just get stone, I get gold. And I deny this woodline and the trade. I thought that was pretty good Berkshire. Maybe it was. I don't know. <clears throat> so now he's got to see his farming set up. And I start going mass horsemen because I knew he had a lot of range units. So I start going mass horsemen plus men at arm because I wanted to do a massive push. And as I was pushing out, I realized he fucking stonewalled, and I was like, oh. So then, my whole comp went kind of down the drain a little bit. 
Because I wanted to, you know, catch him with bar, surprise him a little bit. Here she starts breaking through the stone walls. And now, every once in a while he would get some palace guards in and, and kill a bunch of workers and stuff. Uh, and this is where I slowly start pushing through the middle. Landmark goes down. But you can see his income is kind of wild as well. Now, he doesn't have a lot of gold because I have denied the top gold from him. He only has this one little gold here and taxes. And he does have five relics, which five relics and taxes is a shit ton of gold. He also has pagodas, right? And that's even better. So I force down the pagodas. I'm doing some raiding here. Just cooking everywhere I can. Look at this. Oh. Didn't know there's so many villagers there. I wish I did. The rams are coming out. And now he kind of has, you know, a crap ton of hand cannon ears. I'm breaking down the walls. And I'm just trying to basically beat him with, with mass harassment everywhere. I'm trying to run in units and it's kind of working, but not really. Uh, the villagers are idling over here. I'm trying to get the keep. More barracks. And this goes on for another 20 minutes. There are just attacks everywhere happening. And he is holding strong. Barbecue goes down. Oh, look at that hand cannoneer mass. And I'm running like full melee. I gotta keep here. Like, I should have probably gone sacred sites earlier, to be fair. But I thought I was gonna be able to break it. You know, with, like, harassing everywhere. And I killed a shit ton of workers as well. So I thought I was gonna be fine with just doing that. But I guess I wasn't. I get my siege ball, because now I'm like, well, he has so many nests of bees, so I have to make my own siege. But as I'm, you know, ready to push, he actually pushes into my Berkshire and pushes on the top side. And uh, I end up losing the top side. So this game becomes a little bit clowny right now. I'm running in, I'm killing workers, you know, everything is great. His hand cannons are coming back. The Berkshire goes down. I have a keep here to deny wood. And now, I was like, wait, am I losing this? What is happening? Huh? So now I'm going like fucking Mango now to try to kill his hand cannoneers. I'm trying to kill these guys off. I'm trying to recover the top side, which is, you know, kind of going well, but not really. And, uh, now it's, I'm out of gold as well, by the way. So the gold has been depleted on the map. Yeah, there's no more gold on the map. But I do have all my upgrades and I have, I've stopped making horsemen and I've transitioned to making longbows. Because obviously I don't have gold, so I was like, okay, I'm going to make some horsemen, some longbows, some men at arms and all that. So here, there's uh, like 60 palace guards run by, and I was like, oh fuck me, dude. I'm gonna lose so many villagers. <clears throat> but behind this, he was cooking. Oh yeah, I catch units here too, by the way, which is really nice. Look at this. He's trying to get wood, like here, and here, and here, because he has no more wood left at all. Look at this. Avely is cooking. Mass fire lancers. So at this point, I'm like... A little bit steering. And I'm kind of losing the control of the top, but I'm not. I repaired my Berkshire. There's still a massive wood line here for me. Some wood here too. And I'm like, okay, let's just capture Sacred Side. So let's just go for Sacred Side win. Again, I should have done this earlier. So, I'm holding the middle, 
and now I see these guys once again breaking through and I'm like fuck me because every time I'm on middle he pushes top you know so I send some units to defend and I'm like I'm just gonna push through okay I'm just going for it so I push in with my mangoes and some longbows and I see this and I go huh? Huh? so I instantly rush two more docks to blow up the bridges if you guys don't know you can blow up these bridges and you can't cross so I put my army here on the bridge to hold so he if he runs through I'm dead by the way because Berkshire's dead and uh, 95 fire lancers are gonna burn my three landmarks that are next to each other very fast so I was like oh fuck so I'm here and I'm like wait do I push in do I what I was like I was thinking about deleting my unit so I delete my spring holds, and I was like I didn't know if I should delete these two so my unit somehow moved through I don't know if I fucked it up or what happened but I'm trying my best to hold here demo ships they're stuck in the queue because I was producing too much so I'm going in I'm going in look at this the demo ship goes under the bridge I'm pushing in here and I'm like I'm going straight for the fucking farms look at this demo boom explodes now you need two demos to blow up the bridge look at this bridge health look at this bridge health 11 and he just stops burning for some reason he just stops burning and he's sniping my demos the whole time with bombards the bombards they miss boom I blow up that bitch. No more, no more bridge. He goes in with only a few fire lancers. And the threat is over. And I breathe a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, on the other side, I'm killing his villagers. I blow up this bridge too. Where are you going, sucker? Where are you going? The villagers are getting butchered and I'm like not today brother <laughs> not today you know what I mean get back home go back home right now I got spearmen here I got 40 spearmen bro this guy ain't going nowhere you know what I mean I'm killing his shit over here he's bleeding out he can't do shit look at him he's fucking stuck man look at him he's stuck there's no villager, he's just stuck there. Kick W. So I'm like, I push through, bro. Let's go. Let's go. I'm making rams. I'm like, I'm gonna ruin your farms. He's coming in through the middle. Oh, you're gonna run, punk? So I lose vision of his units here. And I go, oh, fuck. And I was like, oh, fuck. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. I was like, if I... If I fucking lose to this right now, I'm already pre-pulling the villagers and look at the torch damage. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm actually gonna lose the- look at, look at the fucking units. Oh, and I was making demos on this side because he killed the docks. And I was making the demos, but they were not coming out in time. I blow it up. It ain't- you need two demos. And I was like, oh god, I'm gonna fucking lose that. I can't believe I'm gonna lose that after everything I've done. Look at the Ribaldequins though. Look at Ribaldequins. Why is this one not shooting? This one is shooting. Oh my god, did you see that mow down? The TC is alive. He goes in here for the King's Palace. The landmark with the no HP. The bombards are still alive. My sprinkles are dead. The bombards are hitting the TC. I'm repairing with billion villagers here. 28 villagers repairing. I'm cooking. 
This landmark is going down. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm steering right now. I'm ripping off the steering wheel from the dashboard. My TC is fucking dead. And I see the bombards move in here. And I say, uh oh. And I said, block that shit right now. Block that shit right now. The villagers are fucking repairing. Uh oh. Uh oh. I was like, okay, that was, I was like, I did not enjoy that. Did not enjoy that. So yeah, I almost lost that game. And I was like, <laughs> I remember in the game, I was like, oh God, no, not like this. This was the last match of the group stage. The very last of the, not only my group stage, of the whole group stage. It is Lucifron versus Vistikite. And what a game, what a match, what a series. Because the winner of this series goes to semi-final playoff. The winner goes here and whoever lost between two of us gets third place in the group, which means they go here. And Vortex did end up losing 2-0. And Vortex has to face his brother in the round of 8. So he's going to have to play round of 8. If he wins, he needs to play Poppy Paw. If he wins that, he's going to be a rematching against me. So this match, it was a best of 3. It was a group stage, but the stakes were very, very high. So uh, that being said, the first match was Ottoman versus Delhi. Now... Uh, the Spanish brothers, brothers, for some reason, they don't ban Ottoman. I, I don't know why. I think everyone is a bit confused on that. But I don't know if they don't believe they're strong. Or I, 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 I don't know if they think they have a counter to it. But they don't ban Ottoman. And one thing I've noticed is they are trying to snipe. I don't know if they're trying. But they did get Delhi versus Ottoman matchups. Both Vortex and Lucifron. So, the way we drafted the maps, uh, basically, I knew that that he because uh, basically the way this matchup works, okay, Ottoman is probably the strongest sim right now, but Delhi versus Ottoman is favored for Delhi early on. If the game goes on past 15-20 minutes, Ottoman is way more favored, but early on Delhi can make more units. And um, you can kind of overpower Ottoman, right? So, interesting thing is, Marie Lord played against Vortex in this exact matchup. Okay, it was on a different map, but it's, it was this exact matchup. And I was talking about this earlier in the Twitch chat. The advantage of having a brother is that you have someone to practice with and share your ideas with. But there is a big disadvantage to it. And that is that the brothers play very, very similar to one another. Like a lot of the moves they make are very similar. A lot of the sieves they play are very similar. Uh, and if they think this beats that, usually both of the players think that. So, before this match, I watched Vortex versus Marine Lord. And at one point, Vortex masses up an army... And he just charges under Marine Lord's TC. And he ends up killing a lot of workers. And it was working great. Except on the other side, Vortex ended up losing like 10 villagers to Sipahi. But if he didn't miss that, he would have been ahead. So I looked at that game. And I was like, there's a chance that they are letting the Ottoman through. And then they're sniping it with Delhi, and they're, they found this timing, whatever that timing is, right? To charge on their TC and just kill villagers. So, I saw that game, and I was like, I'm, go I'm not going to, like, bank on him doing that, but I'm going to have that in my mind, you know, that he might do it, because they play very similar. So, what ended up happening is that exact thing that happened in Vortex versus Marine Lord, it happened in our game, too. 
so what I wanted to do, and by the way, I'm not revealing like any top tier secrets. Like I'm not gonna play like this against every player, or even against Lucifer or Vortex. Again, it was just you know for this specific situation. Um, GGS for the tournament. So basically, what ended up happening is I said, what I'm gonna do is make Sipahi and then try to raid him. So if at any point he does the charge, he's likely to do it if he sees my army is out of position, right? Because if he sees Sipahi here and his army is here, he's gonna go for it and then I can flank. So I went for Sipahi. I got my second uh, military school. I'm getting all my production up. And I also uh, pushed away his deer very, very far from you know where they are i spread out the deer quite a bit this one not so much because he came back with the scout and he kind of stacked them a little bit but you can see one deer is there some deer here so here i have sipahis i'm running around i'm trying to pick off whatever i can my military schools are kicking in they're doing work um so it's all kind of working out great um wait did i not get the hardened spearman Wait, did I actually not get Hardened Spearman? There's a chance I didn't. It is what it is. So, I'm raiding here. He's capturing the Sacred Science. I'm trying to prevent it, obviously. He's playing pretty safe with them. Yeah, I don't think I got Hardened Spearman. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, so I'm trying to raid. And, uh... I can kind of see his army near around my base. I'm trying to decap the sacred sites. And you can see he's trying to raid as well a little bit. His army is right here. Um, wow, I don't think I got... There's no... I didn't get Hardened Spearman. If I didn't get it till now, I don't think I got it. So... I decap this sacred site. And... Uh, you know, that prevents gold and sacred site win. Eventually, right? So I'm going here, and the army is coming in as well, so I, I just go for the scholar, and the same fucking timing happens. Look at this. Yeah, I never got the hardened spearman, kick W. So I beat him with dark age spearman. So he goes in, and this is the same thing Vortex did against Marine Lord. So, He's going in. I have my TC. I have my archers in a really good spot. I'm running back with Sipahi and he is giga diving here. He's just going for it. So I have a really, really good spot here, right? You can see his units are kind of getting clogged up a little bit. The TC is blasting. And then my Sipahi come back. I did have a bit of an idle time on TC and production because all my food gathering is like right here. But I end up cleaning this up. So, zero villagers lost, and this is the important part, because I decapped the sacred site, I killed one of the scholars, he killed zero villagers, and I have three military schools right now. So I'm like, okay, we gotta go for it. I had too much wood because, again, I had no food, so I wasn't producing units. And soon, as well, I am getting the Janissary Zero Point, which is very, very strong if you're doing like a tempo-based match. I do a little bit of harassment. Um, I didn't manage to catch this scholar, but I am preventing him from capturing his sights. And uh, again, I'm just picking off units wherever I can. And the Vizier point comes in. I spawn Janissaries. And now his whole army is not here. You can see a lot of it is still running upwards. So I just decided to jump on his army straight away. And Sipahi with fortitude, they absolutely mow down archers. Like, absolutely destroy them. Janissaries are untouched because he can't really afford to stop with archers and shoot them. Because then he's just going to lose all the archers. So he's trying to kind of retreat. The army right now is... I'm in full, you know, Ottoman mode. We're past 15 minutes. I didn't take any damage. So now I can just fully produce units. Decapping the sacred site. Preventing this sacred site. And, uh... I also send a couple of Sipahi here, which he does not see, so he ends up losing all the villagers here as I'm pushing through the middle. And uh, in the end, 
you can see the workers are going down. He's doing a Spearman run by here, or maybe he's just misrallied, I'm not sure. But I end up taking um, game number one, which was, uh, it worked out. Why didn't they dive under, why did they dive under opponent DC? Wouldn't it be better to attack your woodland? It's because they want to force the idle time on your food. Look at this dent. Gunpowder units in feudal. Yep, very balanced. Well, first of all, even if I didn't use Genesis there, he would have still lost. And second, there is a ban button in a tournament, so he could have just banned it. But, you know. So this game is HRE versus English. And, um, well, if you've played Golden Heights or if you watch Golden Heights in a tournament, one of the common strategies is to pull three villagers as English because you have bows so you can God, snipe the workers building the dock. So what I did is I went to try and see how many villagers he pulled. I see the villagers and I say, okay, he's over committing. I'm just going to make a barracks and make spearmen. So he misses my barracks. He sees like up until here. So he did not see my barracks. <clears throat> he doesn't see a dock. So he decides to make a dock here and do an easy wall. I end up torching this down. So his idea is he's just going to take the dock here because he doesn't want to run all the way up now and wall it off so my spearman cannot go through. He finds my barracks, but he also finds my spearman that ends up killing his scout. Now the funny thing is, uh, I actually didn't even see this happening in game. Because I was trying to micro here, which I'm assuming he did as well. So I actually didn't even see uh him losing the scout at all but it's a great advantage i mean losing scout at two minutes into the game is really 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 bad so what i did here he has three uh workers so he can actually just repair the wall or shoot at my spearman so i did the next thing that i thought was correct which is to make a dock and then i switched a lot of workers to wood and then I made a transport ship, but I also attacked the wall so that he thinks that I'm trying to break the wall so that he would waste his time attacking them and instead of fishing and also repair the wall. So I forced the idle time. Transport ship comes out, he immediately sees it and immediately tries to run over here. I send a spearman around and I send the reinforcing spearman here so the villagers cannot run. I start torching. I do a little cute micro here. He shoots at the low HP spearman. I pick it up, I check, okay, he's got no fishing boats, that's cool. And he basically wanted to micro, like every time I charge, he might just through the gate. But because I had spearmen on this side, that does not end up working out. Now, he actually made another scout from his town center, which, needless to say, is really, really bad because, you know, he lost a villager there, and he's about to lose three more villagers. So... Uh, some people ask me why did he surrender there? Like, couldn't it he uh, couldn't it he played on? Well, we're soon gonna have same amount of fishing boats. He's gonna have three, four villagers less, right? Because he lost a, a villager by making a scout, and he's gonna lose three villagers here. So he is aging up, but his economy is completely unprepared. So right now, he doesn't have enough wood to make a lumber camp. So he actually needs to... Okay, now he's going to have it. So now he can make a lumber camp right here. But even if he ages up, he has, I think, one or two sheep left. He does not have enough wood for a galley. He does not have enough wood for longbows. And I was actually about to start aging up as well. Like in a moment, you can see me having prelate on the gold because I wanted to age up so the game ends right there and I end up winning two to zero which again puts me at the semi-finals which is very very exciting now next week again this is the the results of the group stage so marine lord puppet paul louis and vortex uh top four demo magic fifth and sixth and you have seven eight nine ten uh group b me Wham, Lucifron, and B, B barely making it in, by the way. He beat Anotan in a deciding match 2-1. to one. <clears throat> And he ended up advancing over him. But Anochad Anna almost advancing. Then we got Zerton, Balticular, Leona, and Abley. Next week, which is March 16th and 17th, I am not playing because I am in the semifinals. So basically March 16th, which is Saturday, is Louis MT versus B. 
and Lucifer versus Vortex. Both of these are best of seven, so they should be great games. I'm definitely going to be tuning in for that. And then on 17th, which is next Sunday, is going to be Wham versus winner of one of these two. Poppy Paul versus the winner of the one of these two. And then March 23rd, which is the week after, I'm going to be playing semifinals versus someone, Marine Lord semifinals. And then March 24th is going to be a third place match. And grand finals which is gonna be a best of nine so super excited for that it's gonna be a lot of fun i can't wait to play best of sevens in a way i'm kind of bummed out i like these kinds of brackets like i think it's kind of exciting because it makes the group stages a lot more alive like every placement matters most of the tournaments that have group stages with more than four players it doesn't really matter where you're placed you know you're all going to quarterfinals but this kind of system makes it so that it really does matter, right? Right. If you're first or second or third or fourth in a group. The downside of this is I will only get to play potentially of two series in the playoffs. So I'll play a best of seven. If I win, I'll play a best of nine. But I guess you can't have it all. That is it for this analysis of the second weekend. I might make analysis. Oh, I, I don't know. Actually, no. I'm probably not going to make a video of every game maybe i'll choose some of the cool games to show you guys between louis mt and b and lucifer and vortex because if i end up analyzing that series and whim and poppy Bo series it's gonna be like a four hour video so maybe i'll choose some cool games from those uh this this and then this and this series and show you guys but obviously it's not gonna be mind games my games not mind games so we'll see if you're watching on youtube thanks so much for watching check me out on twitch i'm probably live right now i'll be obviously streaming and practicing for the tournament live on stream i ain't got nothing to hide and that's it twitch gamers let's keep going